In August, our friend David Platt, the 36-year-old pastor of the church at Brook Hills in Birmingham, was elected to become the next president of the SBC's International Mission Board. The IMB has 4,800 missionaries spread across the world, and no surprise, we got emails like this one. Pastor John, my name is Jake, and I work for a missions organization in Dallas. Can you please address the great ramifications of David Platt becoming the next president of the IMB? When I heard that David had been chosen to lead that great um, peacemaking army, (laughs) I like those two two metaphors together, that, that great peacemaking army of Southern Baptist missionaries one of the largest mission forces in the world, I actually, Tony, I actually trembled and came to tears. Went over to my prayer bench and spoke to the Lord about it. There are a few things that weigh more heavily on my heart than the reality of 6,000 unreached people groups in the world. Groups that, according to Revelation 5-9, Christ was slaughtered, that's the word, slaughtered to reach. Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open seals, for you were slaughtered. And by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation and have made them a kingdom and priest to our God and they'll reign on earth. So by your blood... Lord Jesus, the blood of the Son of God, God's blood, think of it, God's blood poured out to gather a ransomed people from every Muslim and Hindu and Buddhist and Confucian and Sikh and Jewish and atheist and animist people in the world. Nothing, nothing can be more important than what the Son of God died to achieve. So, reaching all the peoples of the world with the saving news of Christ's death and resurrection so that God-worshipping, Christ-exalting, Bible-honoring, people-evangelizing, mission-advancing, justice-pursuing, society-changing communities of believers can be established through the faith in the Redeemer. That's the greatest work of the church that can possibly be in this age. And I say greatest work work of the church, not ultimate goal of the church. The ultimate goal, of course, is passion for the supremacy of God in the hearts of people from every people. The glory of God is the goal, and God is glorified when people are satisfied in him, but they cannot be satisfied in him if they don't know him, if they don't know what he's done to rescue them, if they don't know the promises of pleasures forevermore at his right hand. So world missions, evangelizing the unreached peoples of the world is the great work of the church. Everyone who is passionate about Christ-exalting social justice and Christ-exalting health care and Christ-exalting poverty relief and Christ-exalting deliverance from sex trafficking, and Christ-exalting racial harmony, and Christ-exalting peacemaking, and Christ-exalting dignity for women, and Christ-exalting family structures, and Christ-exalting elimination of government corruption. Everyone who's driven by those passions should be utterly passionate about world evangelization because there can be no Christ-exalting anything without the knowledge of the exalted Christ. The question was, what do you think about his appointment? Okay, I said all that so I could give four responses to that question. Number one, David Platt believes everything I just said. Better than I do, I believe. He really believes in the Great Commission, that the evangelizing of the world into, into people discipling, people's discipling, churches, is the great work of the church. Not just because all all these other works are unimportant, they're certainly not unimportant, but precisely because without the existence of Christians, there can be no Christian good works of any kind in a people group. 
uh, David Platt inhales the lostness of the world and exhales a passion to reach it. And I love it. This is good news. Number two, he knows that most of the peoples who are left to reach are the ones that don't want us to come and who will kill us if we try. And he does not think that should stop us, nor will it stop us. We will not finish the Great Commission without martyrs, and we know that from the Bible, Revelation 6.11, and we know it from the news. And David brings the realism and the courage to handle that volatile situation. Number three, David Platt has vision, a vision of God and his saving work, big enough to sustain the enormous price that will be paid and the radical obedience that will be required in the final era of frontier missions. This is no time for wimpy, silly, weak views of God. This is a time for massive God, and David knows him. Number four, the ear of David Platt's soul is tuned to the Word of God, not the Word of this world. He marches to the beat of heaven's drum, not earth's siren song of comfort and security. All of which, those four things and more, all of which means that I believe God is going to make the Southern Baptist missionary troops not only a force to be reckoned with in the heavenly places of demonic opposition, but also a massive inspiration to many other mission agencies and missionaries and pastors. And I count myself one ready to receive. This this is going to be my prayer, that um, his decision and the IMB's decision, and I'm sure his wife's decision, this, this decision will have global, God-glorifying, mission-completing impact of historic scope, all out of proportion to his limitations. May it be, indeed, an end-time move of the Spirit to hasten the day of God. That is sobering, humbling, and hope-giving. Thank you, Pastor John. And we will be praying for you, David, if you're listening to this podcast. And we're grateful to God for you and for your gifts, for your family, and for this new role that God has called you to. May he richly bless you in many ways. Well, I've never met someone who didn't want to read well. So what does Pastor John say to readers who simply struggle to read anything? It's not just the Bible. They just struggle to read. I'll ask him for his counsel tomorrow. I'm your host, Tony Ranke. Thanks for listening to the Ask Pastor John podcast.